Chances are good you've consumed or used something today that has palm oil in it. Shampoo and soap, margarine and chocolate, and cosmetics like lipstick could all contain the world's most commonly used vegetable oil, though it might be called something else on the label. In fact, plantations of oil palm trees have replaced massive tracts of rainforest beginning in Southeast Asia and spreading across the world. They've deprived plants and animals of their natural habitat and even affected the global climate. Native to Africa and brought to Southeast Asia during colonial times, oil palms now cover huge areas of Malaysia and Indonesia. Together, the two countries produce more than 80% of the world's palm oil. The crop now covers 11% of Indonesia's Sumatra, the world's fourth largest island. In places like Sumatra, the industry's growth has also pushed some of the rainforest's most recognizable animals to the brink of extinction. A similar story is playing out in Borneo, Indonesia's Sulawesi, New Guinea, and increasingly in the forests of the Americas and Africa. The destruction of tropical forests, often called the lungs of the planet, means that more of the carbon we humans emit ends up in the atmosphere, fueling climate change. Research in Malaysian Borneo shows that even mature oil palm plantations hold only about one quarter of the carbon of old growth rainforest ecosystems. At the same time, oil palm is a remarkably productive crop, generating six to 10 times more oil per hectare compared to rapeseed, sunflower or soybean. Farmers still tend small plots of oil palm in some places, but it's the large companies operating huge single crop estates and processing facilities that are responsible for most of the production. The crushed fruits yield crude palm oil, which is then refined into derivative products and exported primarily to South Asia, China, the EU, and the US. Proponents of the industry say it has lifted millions of people in Malaysia, Indonesia, and elsewhere out of poverty. But as it eats away at the world's rainforests, many of which are claimed by indigenous peoples, consumers have begun to take notice. Environmental advocates have pushed to limit the use of palm oil when possible. Some argue against cutting down new areas of standing rainforest. Instead, they say we should use already degraded lands and increase the productivity of existing plantations to meet forecasted demand. Likewise, consumer pressure has helped bring about pledges from major corporations that they'll stop using palm oil tied to deforestation. Some environmental and human rights groups have come together with companies that sell palm oil or use it in their products to form the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil. The RSPO, as it's known, sets standards aimed at reducing the impact of the industry on the environment. But critics of the RSPO say it often fails to enforce its rules and that its sustainability standards don't go far enough. At the same time, governments struggle to regulate the palm oil producers. In Indonesia, home to the world's third largest rainforest, corruption in the issuance of permits for plantations is widespread. For example, shell companies and tax havens help some investors disguise their ownership of plantations where forests are still being demolished. Major conglomerates in the US and Europe have promised to break the link between their palm oil supply chains and the destruction of ancient rainforests and carbon-rich peat swamps. But rising demand for cheap vegetable oil from countries like India and China is often less selective. As the industry expands across the globe, how we manage it will play a critical role in determining the fate of the world's remaining rainforests.